He has been one of the key people in building the brand of Infosys and bringing Infosys on the world stage. Um, he's also involved in a number of initiatives outside of that as well. He's working uh, very hard to promote transparency in the business world. Um, and he was also instrumental in starting a very uh, noble initiative called, um, venture called the Akshay Patra Foundation, which provides midday meal programs to kids. So I'll let him tell you more all about it. Please welcome Mr. Mohandas Pai. Uh, folks, thank you. Folks, thank you very much, but let me correct some things. I don't work for Infosys anymore. One more cuckoo flew over the nest. I'm not the CFO. I stepped down in 2006. I got fed up of handling money. And I'm not going to talk about Infosys. I'm not going to talk about biz, biz, big business. I'm not going to talk about millions and billions, because all of you are going to found your companies. You're going to become millionaires. You're going to become billionaires. But I'm going to talk about something which is a very big idea. And it's an idea which will occupy your entire life and you may not be able to achieve it, but it will make you immensely happy. And the idea is very simple. How do you solve the problem of hunger in the world? Stupid idea? It is a stupid idea. Have you ever starved? Have you ever gone hungry for two days? Have you ever lived on one meal a day for two months at a time? None of you have. If you, under, if you do that, you understand what hunger is. Many, many years ago in the neighboring state of Tamil Nadu, there was a chief minister called M.G. Ramachandran. We know him, M.G.R. M.G.R. was hungry as a child, so when he became the chief minister of Tamil Nadu, he called his senior bureaucrats to his room and told them he wants to have a meal program for children in Tamil Nadu, they all told him it's not a planned expenditure, it's not an investment, the World Bank will not give money, and all the usual rubbish. Six months later, after trying to persuade them many times, he called them home for a feast, gave them a big feast, opened the doors of his house, let the street urchins come in, and he saw them, you know, gorge on the leftover food. Then he told them, if you don't sign the file today, you're all going to be transferred to Ramnath Puram or wherever. They all signed the file, and MGR ran one of the most successful noon meal programs in India. 25 years later, children had grown 2 inches taller, 10 pounds heavier, literacy rates had gone up, maternal mortality rates had come down, infant mortality rates had come down, and Tamil Nadu had become a much better place. And when MGR was in hospital at the time of the elections, he was in a coma, a vegetable. He came back with a thumping majority. All the women in Tamil Nadu voted for him because he gave them something which nobody had given them, food for the child. And for a woman, a child is the most important thing in the life. They made temples out of him. They worshipped him. And nothing could take away their love for him because that single, that man gave something which was extremely valuable for, valuable for them, hope for the child, because they were hungry. Today, there are 500 million Indians who go to bed hungry every day. They live on one meal a day. 45% of India's children in the age group of 0 to 5 are hungry, are malnourished. They will never grow up to realize their full potential. They'll never grow tall like me, maybe a little bit of fat. They'll never realize their mental potential because they have no food. Even today, 455 women die in childbirth for every 100,000 births. 45 children die for every 1,000 births before they reach the age of 1. It all happens because they have no food on the table. They can't afford to buy food. So hunger, folks, is the biggest challenge that human society has. And that's a challenge which we have to face and we have to solve. And my story of trying to solve this started many years ago in 1999. I went to the ISKCON temple in Bangalore. I'd been there one year earlier because there was a remarkable gentleman from IIT Mumbai called Madhu Pandit. Madhu Pandit was one of those people who tried to find the answer to life's biggest problem. Why are we here? Nobody knows why we are here. And what are we supposed to do with our lives? All of you are going to find out. And I'm sure you'll find an answer. You're going to make millions, billions, have the yas, 
F1, B1, whatever it is, or like Nikhil, become an entrepreneur and have fun. I think the best thing to do, just sit on the beach and have fun. The meal will come, somebody will give you a meal, you've got to have good friends, Nikhil. But, but this, this problem has come about primarily because of the way the society, our society is. So I went there and met this gentleman. He was trying to build this temple. He's from IIT, a structural engineer. And he gave up trying to become something in, you know, in civil society. And he said, I'm going to join ISKCON. Rightly or wrongly, I mean, he's a person's passion. No apologies. And then he was building this temple. So I went and said, I will also like to contribute. And I'll do what is called a Sudama Seva. If you read Krishna's tale, Sudama, Sudama was his classmate, the poor guy who comes to him in the palace, and when he tries to meet him, he's so poor that God turns him away, but he, Krishna finds out, he comes inside, and Krishna says, you got something for me, give me. And he removes a bag and gives him powa. You know what's powa, beaten rice, right? Gives it to him, and he puts him next to him and eats it. It's a remarkable story. You must read the story because you will understand the complexities of human life and the vagaries of birth. So I said, I'll give some money, five rupees a day. Nine, we are poor people, five rupees a day was all I could afford. It's in 1999, remember. So two years later, in 2000, we had finished our listing on NASDAQ. We were the company, we built a great company, ethical company. I was the CFO, I got all the awards, and I was a big guy. But my life was empty. Because I said, we built this company, we had a CFO, we worth three and a half billion dollars, we done many things, we created a stock option plan, we made people rich, but what do you do with your life? You want to be CEO? You don't want to be CEO. You're going to do the same thing for the next 10 years. So I was looking around for something to make my life worthwhile. So I, I thought I'll go see what happened and pay back my contribution because I'm not paid for two years. So I went to the temple, went through all the past and was going out. I called a friend to say I'm going. When somebody called my name out and said, Mohan, what are you doing here? I said, I want to meet the president. He took me there and he told me about the story. He had raised 35 crores, 35 crores nickel to build the temple. And he said he designed it himself. He had never designed a structure after leasing IIT because in IIT you don't design anything, right? You just read the books and write the stupid exam. And you get all your marks and you get hired. You never do anything with your hand. So this guy had designed it because the architects who passed out structures they couldn't design it. It's a very complex structure. He said, I designed it. I said, how do you design it? I said, the idea just came to me and I did it. Then I told him, you put in this money, you have this temple, you've got to do something very useful. What do you want me to do? Then the idea struck me about MGR. I told him his story and said, why didn't you run a midday meal program? He said, all right, I'll feed 1,500 children a day. And I got this kitchen, I'll feed them, I need some money. I said, what do you want? I want two buses. I said, here's the check. I had a little bit of money those days. So I said, again, two buses. So we started feeding 1,500 children, went around the government schools. We expanded the program. And we said, we'll do 10,000. 10,000 was a very big number. And we did 10,000. Then somebody from America, who somebody knew somebody, said, I'll give you some $25,000. $25,000 was a big sum of money. He gave it to us, went to 30,000. We had no corpus, we had nothing, but he said, we're going to do it. And after reaching 30,000, the gentleman comes back and says, I'm not going to give you money, put in processes, management, skills. And we were doomed. Don't grow. So we sat down and we thought, what do we do now? And we said, so long as the child is hungry, we're going to feed the child to help with everything else. We had no money, so be it. So we started expanding and said, what should we aim for? 100,000 kids. Why? Out of 10,000, the next biggest number is 100,000, right? So we went to the chief minister of Karnataka, Krishna, and told him of this program. He came. Then uh, President Kalam came to inaugurate in Bangalore. And we had a function. And you know, I must tell you this story about Kalam. We asked him, what do you want for lunch? He said, Mujhe kuch, I want a little bit of rice, some rasam, some sabji. And this guy was staying in the presidential palace with 450 servants and eating rice, sambar, and curd rice. He's from a part of India where you know what. Great guy. But 450 servants, he couldn't put his own pan. There's a guy to hold his pan, one guy to wash him when he goes out his bath. I don't know what he sees. But if you see the bathroom in the Rajpati Bhavan, it's fantastic. And then, then, and then after that, we, we expanded, went to Krishna, and he said he'll do it in the state. We called Muni Mano, Muli Mano Joshi for inauguration, and he gave us the name Akshaya Patra. Akshaya Patra means the pot that never gets empty. In the Mahabharata, the story about Draupadi, uh, who is once supposed to be sitting down somewhere, when a lot of uh, holy men come and she's supposed to feed them, she has no food. So she takes this pot and looks inside and prays to Krishna and said, with all apologies to you, Doc, you know, I want some food. And suddenly there's 
It's a grain of rice, and she hears a voice, eat that grain, she eats the grain. The holy men come back, they're all full and say, thank you very much, we don't want the food anymore. So Akshay Patra, the pot with unlimited food. So we got this name, we reached 100,000, it is a miracle. Then he said, what is the next big number? We said 1 million, 10 lakhs. Everybody was shaking in their boots. Because every day you go to feed the children. We went to Delhi, we spoke to Prime Minister Vajpayee and said, you must have the national program. And they came out of the national program. And from the rampants of Red Fout, Vajpayee announced, we're going to start an Akshay Patra in India. The government fell two years later or the year after that. They couldn't do much thing. But India had a national midday meal program to feed 200 million children so they could come to NIT or maybe go to IIT or wherever the kids want to go. So we did 100,000, set up kitchens in Bangalore. Then how do you feed 100,000 meals a day? So we set up a kitchen which is automated, which has got pneumatic tubes, which is mechanized, and did it all on our own. Because in ISKCON we had people like you who said we're going to make a spiritual life. They're all engineers, unlike anybody else. Engineers from all of the place who suddenly had a calling, they want to do something very different. And they design everything. And then somebody came and said, why do you in South India go to the north? So we said, okay, we went to Rajasthan. In Rajasthan, they eat chapati, they don't eat rice. So we knew how to cook rice, make a sambar with lentils, put in a vehicle, in a stainless steel container, take it everywhere. And remember, people had to get up at 2.30 in the morning, cook the food by 10.30, deliver it to schools. It's a fantastic exercise in logistics. It's a fantastic exercise in processes. It's a fantastic exercise in technology. And then, we went to Rajasthan, spoke to Vasundara Rajas, here's some place to set up a kitchen. So we want to make chapati. So we hired a lot of women to do chapatis, right? You know the Shole movie? You know, Chucky pissing, pissing, right? So we got all these women, and we're pretty excited to see them with the topi rolling. And then we said, this can't work because you can't make 100,000 chapatis in four hours. So we got a chapati making machine somewhere in Punjab. In Punjab, they make everything, all kind of machines even to make chapatis. And they made 10,000 chapatis an hour. And these, these guys, my team, improved it to 40,000 chapatis. They, make, they got a machine which makes 40,000 chapatis, and they're pretty good chapatis. So we improved the machine, and then we had an inauguration where Vasundar Raja came, Sudhamurthy came, and we had Mrs. Billa come, and they all rolled chapatis in front of all the photographers, and we fed those kids. So we had a kitchen in, in Bangalore, Hubri Darwar, Rajasthan. We went to, uh, we went to Puri, and then um, we went to other places all over India in eight states. And then the idea came. We have to go to villages. We have a centralized model where you put up a kitchen, automate, and do things. But we need to have a decentralized model where you can go to a village. So we picked up an a, a area district called Baran district. Baran is somewhere between Madhya Pradesh and Rajasthan. It's, the, it's, the, it's the another place where there's been starvation deaths after independence. Most of you wouldn't know, people have starved to death in this country. People have starved to death. They didn't have food and they died. Children, men, women. So we went there and we picked up 100 villages and we called the women together and told them, we're going to give you the money and we're going to give vegetables, why didn't you cook and provide? So in each village we had three women and they used to cook in the house and they used to go feed the children in the school. The teacher never used to come to the school. But then because they were feeding the children, the children came, the teachers came, it improved the scholastic achievement of children. So we did that in Niagara, today we feed 24,000 children. We, I mean in Baran, then we went to Niagara, next to Kalahandi in Orissa, and we did that. Then we went to, uh, we went to uh, you know, Gauhati, and we did in Gauhati. And we reached the magic figure of one million children. And one million children was enormous. Obama sent us a commendation letter saying the largest midday meal program in the world. But we had no corpus. The government used to pay 55%. We tried to put in our money and we contributed and we used to raise money. And one time, I remember, Ramdas is here, both of us worked together. We had no money, we ran up a OD of one crore rupees. And like you, Nikhil, we didn't know where the money is going. We used to pray to God, Doc, only God saves us. Nobody else, Doc, whatever, however rational you are. But Nikhil, somebody came and gave us a check for one crore. He just came. He just came. And we said, we're going to feed all the children we can. Forget about the money, the money doesn't come, we're going to sell ourselves to help the banks. When Air India can lose 3,000, why can't we lose 20 crores, right? So we said, all right, let's feed the children. So, today folks, we feed 1.3 million children. And in 2020, we have a target of feeding 50 lakh children. Why 50 lakhs? Because a nice number, maybe, maybe 100 lakhs, but 50 lakhs. And you're feeding 13 lakhs children a hot midday meal 
every single day in 8,200 schools across eight states in India. The food is cooked in kitchens, it goes to them and goes so flawlessly. And then we discovered another thing. In one of the districts in North Karnataka, there was a flood. 50,000 people were marooned. We called up the government and said, we're going to feed these people. So what did he do? We cooked food, put in the lorry and delivered 200 kilometers away and fed 50,000 people breakfast, lunch and dinner for 15 days. Then we told the National Disaster Management Agency, we have a, we have a mechanism to do this. We're going to get a lorry which is going to have an automated kitchen, kitchen equipment and tents, one water tanker, one tanker for provision. If the disaster, we go there, we plonk ourselves and we cook. In three hours, you can cook a meal for 100,000 people. Can you imagine the power of this? Each kitchen costs 10 crores. So today, we spend 120 crores a year. Only God knows where the money comes, it still comes. We have a marketing organization. Government gives us about 55-60%. Donors give us money. They raise money from all over. Many of us gave a large part of whatever we earn. But then, one generation of people have seen an improvement. There's been a reduction in dropout rates in schools. Children's scholastic achievements have gone up. Children's have, children have grown taller. They've grown heavier. They're going in for higher education. And we have wiped the tears off the eyes of many million children. And we are giving them food. And our lives have changed because we found new meaning in our life. And believe you me, life becomes worth living. Another idea which I want to leave with all of you, you're going to be successful in your lives. But you must remember, for every one of you in NIT, the government spends five to six lakhs a year. For your four years, the government is spending maybe 25 lakhs. You're going to pay peanuts. For every one of you in NIT, 100 children have lost their lives because they didn't get an education. 100 children lost their lives because they still die for want of food. So when you grow up, have this big idea. You're going to make your millions. You're going to form your company in the Likil. You're going to be mad. You're going to have fun. You're going to teach everybody. But don't forget that poor kid in the street. That could have been you. We're all lucky because, as a friend of mine, Mani Sabarwal says, we're all lucky in the great Ovarian lottery. We won the lottery. We're born to good parents. But that kid was not born to good parents. So whatever you do in your careers, have this great big idea that you are going to change the world. And don't be deterred. And think of scale. Think of big things because there's a billion people. There's a billion people, the largest, second largest country in the world. And you've got to solve this billion. And if you do it in 20 years, you'll have a very, very different country. Thank you very much.